In this training video, we'll show you how to build a part in Onshape's Part Studios. Let's get started. Part Studios are tabs within the Onshape document where you'll create and edit part geometry. Now you can have multiple part studios within each document and can build multiple parts within each studio. We'll quickly walk through the process of building this shaft guide bracket. Let's start with a fresh part studio. To add a new part studio to a document, select the Create tab icon. It's the little plus symbol at the bottom left. And choose Create Part Studio from the menu. To start a part, you'll usually create a base sketch on a datum plane. Here I'll sketch on the top plane. I simply pick the top plane and then the new sketch icon. Notice that the toolbars change, revealing the sketch commands. This dialog will stay open while I create the sketch and I can look normal to my sketch by either clicking the right mouse button and choosing the View Normal option, or by pressing the N key. Also, I can hide the planes by hitting the P key. I'll start by sketching a center point rectangle and two circles. Notice that as I sketch entities, the mouse cursor picks up sketch constraints. I'm drawing a circle that's aligned with the center point of this edge and coincident and tangent to the top of the rectangle. I'll draw a second circle that's concentric to the first. At any time, I can see the constraints by mousing over the entity or by choosing Show Constraints in the Sketch dialog. If I wish to impose a new constraint manually, I simply choose the entities and then the constraint type. Here I'll select the bottom line and this circle and impose another tangent constraint. Adding dimensions is easy. One command allows you to add different dimension types based off the entities you select. I'll dimension the diameters of both circles and specify a distance from the center of the circle to the right edge. You should have noticed that Onshape scaled my sketch based off the first dimension I specified. Also, notice the color of the geometry. When the sketch is black, it's fully constrained. It means the sketch is fully defined based off dimensions and geometric relationships. I'll delete this dimension. And you see now the sketch has blue components, which I can drag to understand its degrees of freedom. I'll leave the sketch under constraint for now, because I'd like to highlight an editing technique downstream. It's time to turn the sketch into 3D geometry. To do this, I can use features such as extrude, revolve, or sweep. From this single sketch, I'm going to create two extrusions. First, I'll extrude the entire profile half an inch. Notice that even though I'm running in a browser with no software installed on my system, I can still drag the geometry by eye before settling on the final value. The sketch is automatically hidden once the 3D feature is created, but I wish to use it again. So I'll show it by selecting the small eye symbol next to the sketch. Now I can select the extrude command again, but this time I'll choose specific regions of the sketch that make up the circular boss. I'll extrude this shape 2 inches. Now before I accept the command, let's look closely at the dialog box. Notice that this extrude does not need to add material to the existing part, but it could actually be used to create a new part, or a cut, or shape the part by creating intersecting geometry. I have a lot of different options. I also have options on the end conditions for the extrusion. For example, I can extrude up to a surface or in two directions. This little slider bar at the bottom will show me the results with varying level of transparency. By sliding the bar to the left, I can see the geometry before the extrusion, and by sliding it to the right, I get a full preview of the results of the command. I am now ready to sketch my next feature. Now remember, I can sketch on any plane or any planar face, so I'll select this end face, and instead of moving the mouse to the toolbar, I'll simply use the right mouse click button menu and select New Sketch. Once again, I'll view normal by hitting the end key and begin sketching my entities. Here I'll create a rectangle aligned to the corner of the geometry. I want the second corner to be vertically aligned with the bottom corner of the base feature, so I'll wake up the point by moving the mouse over it, and now I can pick up the relationship. I'll draw a circle and a center line, and now I can use the mirror command to create a second circle on the other side with symmetry. Finally, I'll add a few dimensions. Now 
Now when I select extrude, I will add material to the depth of a half an inch. And I can pick the direction of the extrusion. OK, we have a basic shape, but we need to apply some features such as fillets and chamfers. Let's start by adding a 1 8 inch fillet to a few edges. Now I can either pre-select the edges and then hit the fillet command, or hit the fillet command and then specify the edges. If you miss pick, you can either deselect a specific edge from the dialog box by clicking the little X that appears, or you can deselect all edges by right mouse clicking outside the dialog box and choosing clear selection. You can also clear selection anytime by simply depressing the spacebar. Notice too that Onshape previews the fillet for you. Now I'll create a 1 16th inch fillet along the outer edges of the part. And you notice that Onshape will run the fillet along tangent edges if the option is selected. Finally, I'll chamfer both sides at a large hole, and I can do this by simply selecting the cylindrical surface. OK, let's stop here and look at the list area. You'll notice that I have a list of all features, and I can quickly see the steps that I used to build this model by moving the rollback bar. I can also rename any of these features. There's a specific command for that, rename, or I could edit the feature itself and type in a new name. When I edit the feature, I get a dialog similar to the one that I saw when I created the feature. But now there's a new final button. I really like this because I can select it and see how my changes affect the overall part. It previews the part up to the current position of the rollback bar. So watch as I drag the original sketch. Each time I release the mouse button, the part is shown in its final form. And now I'll add that missing dimension and fully constrain the base sketch. One last thing. I now have the part listed below in this area. I can right mouse click here and rename the part. I can add properties and even change its appearance. I'll go ahead and change its color. So now we have a simple part. And hopefully you agree that the workflow was very similar to traditional CAD. But let's take a second and discuss a few things that are unique about Onshape. The first thing is I never have to save my work. Onshape's constantly recording everything. As I exit and re-enter the document, I can pick up right where I left off. In fact, I can access the entire recorded history of the part and restore it to any point in my design process. Second, I can instantly access my data from any device. Here I'm accessing it from my iPad. At the same time, I'm accessing it from my laptop. I'm not just viewing the geometry. I have all the Onshape capabilities, and the interface has been optimized for my tablet. Also, data management is built into Onshape. When I reach a milestone in my part design, I can protect it by creating a version. Now, no matter what changes are made, I can always retrieve this important state of the document. You should understand that an Onshape version is not a copy of the document. It's a snapshot, accessible within the document. It's a simple and elegant approach to data management. Of course, having this document in the cloud also creates new and amazing ways to collaborate, but we'll cover that in another video. Let's summarize. Part Studios are tabs within documents used to create and edit part geometry, and the modeling workflows are very similar to traditional CAD. Your work is saved constantly, and you can access it from any device. Data management is also built in. Onshape Part Studios also enables you to design multiple parts together, which dramatically saves time and ensures proper fit and function. And that's the topic of our next video.